Hi, this is Steve Niles, and you're watching Dread Central. Sentence is a uh, classic revenge story, uh, but with a slight difference, with a twist. It's uh, it, it's unique in that um, you know you don't quite expect what to happen. You know, like halfway into the film, um, it's a story about a uh, a father, an everyday man, you know, whom uh, one day witnesses his son getting killed right before his eyes, and uh, and he's angered um, by this, and he decides to go after the uh, the bad guys. He decides to take the law into his own hands, uh, but what he finds out is that um, revenge can cut both ways as well. Death Wish was actually a novel, and it is the same novelist. Uh, this is another book that uh, that the guy wrote. I went back and looked at the first Death Wish. I didn't make it through all you know, eight of them. Uh, and, you know, which I was, knew very well as, as a young man, but I had, had not seen it in a long time. The thing that's really different about Death Wish is that Death Wish uh, is a movie about a guy who takes the law into his own hands, becomes a vigilante, and goes after all criminals. Um, in fact, Bronson doesn't even go after the guys who uh, hurt his family. He just doesn't even focus on them. He just puts himself into situations where he knows he's going to get mugged and you know, turns around and smacks him in the head or you know, shoots him or whatever. In Death Sentence, it's, it's, it's much more of a revenge movie than a vigilante movie. True, the guy does go outside the law and makes that terrible, fatal mistake, but it's really more about this cycle of violence that he unfortunately creates and that he um, uh, is, is then focused on, on this one gang and, and seeking revenge. But it all deals within the sort of um, each character's capacity of how far they'll go to protect what they own because within my character and his character there's a juxtaposition. We both have our family that's being affected by this and it's a test of how far I will go and how far he will go to protect what we own. So in a strange way, you start to learn a little bit more on the personal side about who he is. In the beginning of the movie, you just think of him as this like, crazy gang monster kind of guy. You start to learn a little bit more about his personal side. And on the flip side, you start to see me transform a little bit more into who he is. And at the end of the film, you look at the two of us, uh, or we're the, only, we're the last men standing, and, and it's like the same, like two, two sides of the same character. Mm. with about 30 years difference, but still. <laughs> you go near my family, and I will cut out your guts like I did your friend. Do you hear me? He wasn't my friend. He was my brother. And now I'm coming for the rest of your family. I try to show a lot of it from the point of view of the gang members as well, especially through Garrett Hedlund's character. Um, I think, you know, like, all he is, he's out there to protect his family, and his family is his gang, you know? And, uh, and I think, uh, I think uh, it's important to um, not just make them be throwaway villains, because um, you know, that would kind of cheapen the film, I think. What I basically tried to do with my character was make it so he wasn't just some sort of figure, wasn't some mannequin where, where all this was just piled on top of him. Um, you know, the, the wardrobe and the makeup and everything, you know, I didn't want to try and just look mean, you know, I wanted to be mean. And, uh, and that comes from coming into work hungover. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you come into work a little hungover and all of a sudden the light pisses you off, somebody telling you what to do pisses you off, and, and you're just about to explode. Shaking it off on Friday is difficult because you know that you're going to have to get back into it on Monday. Uh, so it, it affects your thoughts, uh, it affects my dreams, you know, um, I feel a, a strong need to, uh, 
get back in touch with my family and you know you know see my kids and kind of reaffirm that they're okay and you know because I'm spending all this time with you know feeling you know the opposite and of course using them which I have to use them for my own kind of sense memory sort of thing not only does my character sort of uh, pull empathy from the audience but also Kevin's does Kevin's a father in this film that has had a lot of tragedy happen to him in a very short amount of time and both my character and Kevin Bacon's character sort of pull empathy out of the audience. I know that I cannot compete with the big sum of blockbusters, you know, I don't have 200 million here to work with, so, uh, you know, like I can't do CGI and really over the top stuff, so I decided to really go the opposite way and, uh, and make a movie with action scenes that are really intense and gritty. One of the things I really very proud about in terms of the film, proud of James's work and, and uh, the stunt team, the special effects team, is that the this day and age, I mean, most action films are, are really driven by a lot of CG, by a lot of um, digital effects. And th there's none in Death Sentence. So everything that's there is real and uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, like in a way going back to, you know, the, uh, the way films were made in the early you know, Bronson's days or Peck and Paw, you know. There's classic chases. I mean, we got we got a chase that, that'll that kill Point Breaks, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> right, so, all right. Uh, you know, we go uh, through the alleys, just, just open fire. And so it's one of those classic, you know, why aren't they arrested for that shooting in public? But then again, these guys are just, you know, they're good at what they do. I think people should go see this film because there's nothing like this out there right now. In amongst all these $200 million summer blockbusters and all that, you know, with all the top CGI, here's a film that really harks back to just, you know, storytelling and um, just, you know, uh, about emotion and it's got great acting and really scary action scenes. Well, the reason people are going to come to this film because it's the great sort of you know, it's the classic vigilante sort of premise of a film, the, the films we all loved. Eighty million dollars less budget, but all your money worth of uh, performance. Kevin Bacon is um, truly one of the greatest actors uh, I, I, I've always admired. You know, I think he's such a great actor. I think he's one of the few people out there that has such a wide range. He can play a good guy and he can play a bad guy, you know, as well. And uh, and he plays so many shades in between as well. Um, and Kevin is so fantastic in this film. I really think his performance really anchor the whole film for me. And, uh, and really is one of the reasons why people are gonna cry in this film as well. It's a tearjerker. Oh, really? <laughs> I call it my tearjerker with guns. Um, <laughs> but, but that's what it is, you know, it is a, it's a real emotional film and, you know, Kevin, Kelly Preston, they really bring a lot to um, the family side of things. And, uh, and even Garrett Hedlund as well, you know, for him, it's about protecting his family too. So it really is a story about two very different kind of families, two very different worlds colliding, you know, like their paths crossing. And, uh, and it can only end in a very bad way.